Good. Nice. I um, might be planning on doing like a trying to learn the uh, Sigma soon. And I don't know when because I'm planning to do on most of the runs in the category. So yeah. 4.8 seconds. Not a big deal considering the fact I got nerfs in the majority of other things in this game. No shame on playing on Rand Rando. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't worry. I'm gonna. It's not like I'm gonna pal or anything. Because I, I remember doing a Sigma's Expert Rando and kind of just screwed up. Well, not, not really screwed up, but like I really struggled on the laser panels for symmetry. Because I had to keep looking back and forth, I was like, oh shoot, I need to imagine if it's rotated, you know? <laughs> and then it's rotated, it's like, wait a second, what am I doing? <laughs> and I'm imagining it's rotated, but oh god, it's, it's too much. My rando is harder than his. <laughs> Honestly, I believe that. Sooner or later, you're just gonna put in screaming goats on every single footstep this player makes. And be like, so much screaming that it just makes people wanna cry. That's the type of person that you are. That you are. <laughs> Not generalizing, but just, you know. That was a struggling snipe, but... That's okay... I'm feeling nervous, I hate everything! <laughs> Why do I feel nervous? I don't know anymore. I know it's just for some reason I am feeling nervous and I hate everything about it. Triangles, hexagons. Well, yeah. Uh, once your uh, random item comes out, I'll definitely try. And smack myself in a brick wall like I did now. Because I'm so good at this game. <laughs> okay. Make a third mode with just Tetris. Ah, Tetris hell. Yeah, Tetris pieces are difficult. Right. Not too sadistic, unless you're just gonna go ahead and throw it in a bunch of other stuff. Which that's okay, that's even more of it sadistic. Wow. So there's someone, uh, 
his name is Neuropsych. He's French. Uh, I mean, he's now my rival. <laughs> uh, right now, his uh, PB is 1910. And I keep seeing him in the streams. Uh, he got a really good peek review and stuff like that. And it was pretty nice to see actually see other people, but because I suck at the game, please do sound waves correctly. Make people listen to air conditioning, and the air conditioning is actually the answer. Hey, that's a like suggestion. <laughs> every a suggestion. Every single panel will be sound and Tetris, except the sound will be multiple sounds coming from three screaming goats and an air conditioner. And sometimes the air conditioner is actually the answer. Beautiful suggestion. <laughs> oh, what am I talking about? Seems like a nice idea. So what other uh, things that you do on your stream? Because last time when I checked your checked your Twitch, uh, you got you were doing like uh, keep talking, nobody expo explodes, but everything is mortal. <laughs> uh, it's pretty interesting. I have the game, but I have no friends, so I can't play it because I <laughs> because I don't know anyone who wants to play with me. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess I'll be playing it solo and I tell myself to detonate bomb. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you can come and invite me. Uh, or not. It's up to you. I honestly don't mind. I got hit by the door that was opening. First of everything. It's above! <laughs> it's above, not below. <laughs> why Why is keep being special? I don't know why. It's like everything else is just, you have to start at the bottom. 
Wait, no, it's by the top. Wait, no. <laughs> okay. You know where we're later? We're gonna go to Mountain Hell and we're gonna. So then everything is. Uh, I screwed up. I'm mad. Hmm. Do not read your text because I screwed up the uh, swamp pretty badly. So. That's something. I also don't have to did miss your chat message. Sorry about that. I feel like Swamp is gonna really bite me. I don't know. Because Swamp, it shouldn't be too difficult. And I managed to screw it up. Uh, oh well. Up there, you go around every hour and a half, time after time after time. Meme audio log. In the mornings, and just the way that the track of your orbits go, you wake up over the Mideast, over North Africa. As you eat breakfast, you look out the window as you're going past, and there's the Mediterranean area, and Greece, and Rome, and North Africa, yeah. and the Sinai. The whole area. And you realize that in one glance, that what you're seeing is what was the whole history of a man for years. The cradle of civilization. And you go around down across North Africa and out over the Indian Ocean. And look up at that great subcontinent of India. Pointed I down screwed up. Oh my past. god. And Ceylon off to the side. Burma. Southeast Asia. Out over the Philippines and up across that monstrous Pacific Ocean. Vast body of water. You've never realized how big that is before. And you finally come up across the coast of California and look for those friendly things. Los Angeles and Phoenix and on across El Paso. And there's Houston. There's home. And you look and sure enough, there's the Astrodome. And you identify with that, you know? It's an attachment. And down across New Orleans, and then looking down to the south, and there's the whole peninsula of Florida laid out. And all the hundreds of hours you spent flying across that route, down in the atmosphere, all that is friendly again. And you go out across the Atlantic Ocean and back across Africa. And you do it again, and again, and again. And that identity, that you identify with Houston, and then you identify with Los Angeles, and Phoenix, and New Orleans, and everything. And the next thing you recognize in yourself is you're identifying with North Africa. You look forward to that. You anticipate it. And there it is. That whole process begins to shift of what it is you identify with. When you go around it and inhale a half, you begin to recognize that your identity is with that whole thing. And that makes a change. You look down there, and you can't imagine how many borders and boundaries you crossed again and again and again. And you don't even see them. At that wake-up scene, the Mideast, you know there are hundreds of people killing each other over some imaginary line that you can't see. From where you see it, the thing is a whole. And it's so beautiful. And you wish you could take one from each side in hand and say, look at it from this perspective. Look at that. What's important? And so a little later on, your friend, again, those same neighbors, another astronaut, the person next to you goes out to the moon. And now he looks back and sees the Earth, not as something big, but he can see the beautiful details. 
but he sees the Earth as a small thing out there. And now that contrast between that bright blue and white Christmas tree ornament and that black sky, that infinite universe, really comes through. The size of it, the significance of it, it becomes both things. It becomes so small and so fragile and such a precious little spot in that universe that you can block it out with your thumb. And you realize that on that small spot, that little blue and white thing is everything that means anything to you. All of history and music and poetry and art and war and death and birth and love, tears, joy, games, all of it is on that little spot out there that you can cover with your thumb. And you realize that that perspective, that you've changed, that there's something new there, that relationship is no longer what it was. And then you look back on the time when you were outside on that EVA and those few moments that you had the time because the camera malfunctioned, that you had the time to think about what was happening. All and you right, recall cool. staring out there at the spectacle that went before your eyes. Because now, you're no uh, longer inside something with a window looking out at a picture. But now you're out well, there, I got a and what you've got around your head is a goldfish bowl. And there are well, no limits here. Not just a one-shot like that. There are no frames. Really there are no boundaries. You're really out there, over it, floating, nice going 25,000 miles per hour, ripping through recovery. space, a vacuum, and there's not a sound. There's a silence, the depth of which you've never experienced before. And that silence contrasts so markedly with the scenery and the speed with which you know you're going. That contrast, the mix of those two things, really comes through. And you think about what you're experiencing and why. Do you deserve this? This fantastic experience? Have you earned this in some way? Are you separated out to be touched by God to have nice. some special experience here that other men cannot have? You know the answer to that is no. There's nothing that you've done that deserves that, that earned that. It's not a special thing for you. You know very well at that moment, and it comes through to you so powerfully that you're the sensing element for man. You look down and see the surface of that globe that you've lived on all this time, and you know all those people down there. They are like you. They are you. And somehow you represent them when you are up there. A sensing element, that point out on the end, and that's a humbling feeling. It's a feeling that says you have a responsibility. It's not for yourself. The eye that doesn't see does not do justice to the body. That's why it's there. That's why you're out there. And somehow you recognize that well, you're- Well, I choke on cool. the elevator. <laughs> you're out on that forefront and you have to bring that back somehow. And that becomes a rather special responsibility. It tells you something about your relationship with this thing we call life. And when you come back, well, I beat there's my a difference rival. in that world now. There's a difference in that relationship between you and that planet, and you and all those other forms of life on that planet, because you've had that kind of experience. <laughs> I tied my rival. <laughs> More PVs. Let's just hope I don't screw up swamp again. <laughs> what time is it? Okay. Let's do...